After returning to its winning ways, Texas had revenge on its mind. The Longhorns moved on to face Rice with hopes of avenging a shocking 1994 upset. The Horns drove 56 yards on the opening drive to set up a Phil Dawson 36-yard field goal. Rice answered, driving to the Texas 8. Bryant Westbrook stuffed a running play, and Robert Reed batted down the pass, and the Owls were forced to settle for a field goal and a 3-3 tie. Phil Dawson capped the Horns' second drive by hitting a 33-yard field goal to reclaim the lead. Texas' first drive of the second quarter was set to net a third field goal, but Rice was charged with roughing the kicker, and the Horns got a second chance. Mike Adams started things off with a nine-yard gain on a reverse, then capped the drive by snaring a James Brown six-yard TD pass that put Texas on top 13-3. I don't, I don't think the team really focused on, you know, trying to go back and pay rights back. Uh, we were really concentrating on winning that game and, you know, accomplishing our goals for the year. Uh, I think it was like our first or second, you know, Southwest Conference matchup, and uh, we're just really focusing on beating them and looking forward to next week playing against Oklahoma. Uh, you know, they beat us last year and embarrassed us, but we really couldn't buy into that too much, and we, it probably would have distracted us from playing the way we did against, you know, Rice, and uh, we just really wanted to go out and win the game. The Owls wouldn't give up and charged back with a TD and a late second quarter field goal to take the momentum to the half, 13-13. The Steers came out energized in the second half with intentions on quieting any Owl upset plans. They did just that, driving 80 yards on 10 plays on their first possession. Pat Fitzgerald's 19-yard TD catch on fourth down began a string of 24 unanswered points for the Longhorn. Wide open downfield, Brown by Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald was left alone at the five-yard line. Everybody went for the fake, and James Brown found Fitzgerald for the touchdown, 19 yards. I think I see a shoe or two on the field or a sock because the Owls were faked right out of them. James Brown directed Texas to four scores in five second-half possessions. Ricky Williams scored a pair of one-yard runs, and Dawson's third field goal paved the way for a 37-13 victory. Defensively, Tyson King's 14 tackles led the way in a Longhorn second half shutout. The victory was satisfying, but it didn't take long for the Longhorns to turn its attention to its next opponent, Oklahoma. In their final meeting as non-conference opponents, Texas and Oklahoma renewed their annual rivalry, the Dr. Pepper Red River Shootout at the Cotton Bowl. Both teams entered the game riding high and positioning themselves for an outstanding season. Oklahoma game has always been a big game in Texas tradition and people look forward to it. Everyone tries to get tickets and we just go out and try to have, a, we know it's going to be a hard-nosed football game every time, really no late penalties or anything, just everyone going out playing hard. And me personally coming back, I knew that week that I was probably going to get a chance to play. I didn't know how much, but, um, depending on my leg, but when I came back, I was just happy to be out there on the field. And when I got my first sack, then I just thought, well, maybe it's not all bad that I've been out all this time because I can still do the things that I used to do. Energized by the return of Tony Brackens and aggressive special teams plays, the Longhorns threatened to run away with things. On the third play of the game, Bryant Westbrook's hit on Sooner quarterback Eric Moore caused a fumble that Tyson King pounced on at the OU 39. Texas capitalized as James Brown hit three passes, the last an eight-yard TD to Pat Fitzgerald for a 7-0 lead. The Longhorn defense took charge on the Sooners' next series as Tony Brackens made his return known with a sack and OU was forced to punt. Derek Lewis stormed through the line and blocked the kick, and fellow New Orleans native Michael Bodwin pounced on it for a TD, and Texas was on top 14-0 less than five minutes into the game. A long count. Good snap, and the kick is blocked. It's blocked and picked up for a touchdown. Texas scores the touchdown. Oh, my, the big block and the recovery, and it is Michael Baldwin. The Horns extended the lead to 21-0 on their next series. Three plays into the drive, Sean Mitchell broke off tackle and sprinted 69 yards for a score. Texas was on the move again in its next series, advancing to the OU-6. But a 15-yard holding penalty and a sack knocked the Steers out of scoring range, and they were forced to punt. 
From that point on, momentum swung. Oklahoma drove 98 yards to get on the board. Texas and Oklahoma each added a field goal to make the score 24-10 at intermission. OU came out firing on all cylinders in the second half, tallying a pair of scores and nodding the game at 24 all by the midway point of the third quarter. OU looked to go on top in the third quarter, but Tony Bracken stepped up again, blocking a 53-yard field goal attempt to give Texas the ball. In the final period, the Steers got off to a great start. When Mike Adams returned to punt 39 yards to give UT the ball at the OU 47. The Horns drove to the 11, where a failed option play on fourth and one returned the ball to the Sooners. Oklahoma had one last chance, but when its 42-yard field goal attempt sailed wide left, Texas survived with the series' fifth tie. Captains, when we go out, if we win the toss today, we're going to defer. We expect them to take the ball, and then we'll defend our end. The wind's blowing out of the south, and it's a pretty good breeze today. We're going to have to play half the game into that, and we'll have to play very well uh, and use our smarts on those particular quarters when we're playing into the wind. If they win the toss and defer, we'll go ahead and take the ball. And they will likely take the wind, and we'll play the first quarter, and we'll have to play well coming out of there in the first quarter. Whoever has, someone's going to have the wind at the, at the back, someone's going to have it in their face in the first quarter. But two of the four quarters, it's going to be that way. It's our job to play well uh, all four quarters, regardless of that, but recognize that the kicking game especially, there are some things that are different when you have the wind at your back and when, when you have the wind in your face. Uh, field goal kicking, we can snap the ball from the 40 going north. We have to get the ball to the 20 going south, okay? So there's a big difference there. They also have an excellent punter. He'll kick the ball pretty far. Well, I would expect the kickoff guys will kick the ball into the end zone when they have the wind at their back, okay? Everyone set on that and what we're doing there. There wasn't much time to rehash the Oklahoma game as the Longhorns began preparation for number 14, Virginia. More than 70,000 Longhorn fans filed into Memorial Stadium on the warm and windy mid-October afternoon, and none could have been prepared for what they were about to witness. Emotion swayed throughout as both defenses controlled much of the game. Texas capitalized with the game's first big play. James Brown rolled right to set up a screen pass to Jeffrey Clayton. Clayton took the toss and dashed 30 yards down the sideline and soared into the end zone to give the Longhorns a 7-0 first quarter lead. Virginia answered with a pair of field goals and a touchdown to take a 13-7 halftime lead. It would be another 25 minutes before another score would be notched, and it took a 16-play, 80-yard Texas drive to do so. Ricky Williams gained the most important yard of his 139 with a one-yard touchdown with five minutes left that gave the Horns a slim 14-13 lead. Longhorn Spirits took a hit when Virginia drove right back and reclaimed the lead 16 to 14 on a 56 yard field goal with 312 remaining. That set the stage for the dramatic finish. Driving into a 20 mile per hour headwind, the Steers methodically moved down the field on their final series. After a pair of fourth down conversions, James Brown scrambled for 11 yards. With three seconds remaining, all eyes were on kicker Phil Dawson as he set up for a 50 yard field goal. Good snap, good hold. The kick is on the way. And the kick from Dawson is good! It's good! And the Longhorns have won the game! 17 to 16! Oh my! And there is pandemonium on the field at Memorial Stadium. Let's check in with Jeff Ward on the sideline. Well, he absolutely murdered that ball. And I tell you what, guys, it looked like it was going to clear in the upright by 10 yards, and it started blowing backward. It was awfully close, awfully, awfully close, but a huge kick by Phil Dawson. The ball fluttered in the air. It held up. Everyone in this stadium held their breath, and somehow, some way, it dropped over the upright through the crossbar, and Texas gets the victory. It's probably one of the toughest days to kick a ball that I've ever been in. You know, that wind was coming 20, 25 miles an hour out of the south, and uh, I'd been out there earlier in the game to try two, and I'd missed them with the win. So uh, my confidence level was not at its highest level. And uh, coming down to the end, I just realized, I said, hey, I just got to put this ball on line. You know, I don't know if it's going to have the leg to get there, but if, if I just get it on line, and hopefully, you know, it'll, it'll float in there. And sure enough, I, I got it on line and went through. And uh, it, I can't believe I made it. I still can't believe I made it to this day. The 
kick marked the first time the Longhorns won a game at home as time expired and sent Texas on an emotional high that would be a defining moment in the season. When I came to Texas, so many people talked about what the, the Oklahoma game would take out of the team and how it was so difficult to play the week after Oklahoma. And of course, we had to play Virginia the very next week. And we approached it as if we had to play this game just as importantly as any other game. And of course, we had the tie and it was a little bit controversial and uh, there was so much surrounding go the, the team going into that week. And I was interested how we would rebound and how we would play against a team ranked in the top 15. They had an excellent team in many respects. And the game went back and forth just about as we expected. But the, the interesting thing was that our defense began to take on a different personality and it really began to show itself. No one will ever forget Phil Dawson's kick though. That is one that is going to live in Texas football annals for so many years. People will remember. Uh, we probably will have 120,000 people who will have been in the stadium for that particular kick over the years, but that's okay. It, it really put an exclamation point to our football season. There were plenty of concerns about the Longhorns coming down from the euphoria of such an emotional victory, but an off week between contests certainly helped matters. Texas returned to Southwest Conference play facing number 23 Texas Tech with hopes of avenging an embarrassing 1994 loss to the Red Raiders. First things first, we just wanted to come out and set the tone. Uh, they were coming to our place showing a lot of disrespect, uh, talking a lot of noise. They were going to take this game just like they took last year's. And, more thing we wanted to set the tone, uh, beat them up, beat them up real bad and show them that you can't come to Austin and win just any time you want to. On a cool overcast evening and in front of a sellout crowd at Memorial Stadium, the Horns heated up early, scoring a pair of first quarter touchdowns. Sean Mitchell went 32 yards for his first of three TDs on the night. Then Justin McLemore hauled in a 15 yard scoring strike from James Brown for a 14 nothing Texas lead. Then the defense took charge. Tony Bracken's bone-crushing tackle of Red Raider place kicker Tony Rogers called it a Red Raider fake field goal attempt early in the second quarter. That shot set the tone for a Longhorn defense that kept Tech on its heels throughout the game and began to surface as a big play force. The offense continued to rise as well, charging to a pair of scores on their next two possessions for a 28-0 halftime lead. Texas continued to dominate in the second half as Brackens caused a fumble that Robert Crenshaw picked up and rumbled 33 yards for a score. Crenshaw down the left sideline, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, he's in! Robert Crenshaw returns the fumble for a touchdown. Say goodnight, Red Raiders, because I'll tell you what, the intensity is still there. Robert Crenshaw, of course, has had to come in for the injured Trey Thomas, play that safety spot and he was all over the ball after it squirted out loose and took it down the sidelines and then did a good job of turning it back inside and then back to the end zone. Phil Dawson hit a pair of field goals including this 52 yarder and Sean Mitchell dashed 36 yards for a score as the Horns extended their lead to 48 nothing entering the fourth quarter. Tony Brackens and Robert Reed were named Southwest Conference Defensive Players of the Week in the 48 to seven win. Ricky Williams and Sean Mitchell each rushed for 100 yards, and Texas gained 305 yards on the ground to spearhead the offense. Mitchell also received Southwest Conference Offensive Player of the Week honors. It's very important, you know, it started off our Southwest Conference run, you know, by beating them, you know, we were ready to play that game, we was talking about it all this, I mean, all that week, you know, we came out to play and we proved that we can, you know, beat Tech, you know, even though we ain't beat them in the last two years, you know, they beat us on Raycon last year, and this year we beat them on national TV, so, we proved that we could play, you know, against the big, you know, Southwest Conference team. So we took advantage of our, you know, our practices and we practiced hard that week and we came to play. So, you know, even though I scored three touchdowns, you know, I get an offensive line, they credit. With the running attack surfacing and the defense gaining newfound respect, this victory set the scene for the Longhorns run at the final Southwest Conference Championship. This game meant a lot. Uh, it was uh, the electricity of the night and we were the only game on TV at the time. And so everyone got a chance to see exactly what we could do against a good team like Texas Tech. As far as the team goes, uh, this was our national run. Uh, we're real focused and we're really trying to make our way towards the top and this is the season that was going to do it. And a game like this just propelled us forward to let us know that we have the capability, you know, and here it was and we proved it that night against Texas Tech.